few weeks ago, I was riding with my wife in Brown County. She's on the e-bike, so I can't keep up, and I'm getting frustrated. And on, you know, if you haven't been to Brown, Nashville, Indiana, Brown County area, it's really got like these really sharp hills. And the final hill before we got back to Nashville, Indiana, I just like she passed me on the e-bike, and I stood up, and I just went like. You know, like, ugh, all in, you know, as hard as I could. And I heard crack. And it was like, ugh, you know, because I thought I broke my chain or something. <laughs> but instead, what had happened is I broke the ratchet ring on my power tap wheel. If you're not familiar with power tap, power tap is like old school power meter. Um, I think this one was maybe around 2010. I'm not exactly sure. Let's look that up real quick. Power Tap was really the first like affordable commercial power meter. There had been power meters around for a while, but they were very expensive. And Power Tap was more affordable in the hub based back wheel. I don't know what they cost, but I had a Power Tap wheel I bought on eBay that while it was heavy, it was, you know, they were actually almost like, I think like about 400 gram, like basically a pound heavier. A lot of extra weight in that back hub. But it worked really well. It was pretty accurate and I used it for Zwift and I used it for training even though I didn't really train that much with it. But mainly I just used it as just kind of like just a cool factor, you know. So I'd finish a ride and I'd look and I'd be like, man, I hit 1200 watts today or man, you know, I sustained 300 watts for whatever, you know. So anyway, I'm kind of missing having that. And so I've been looking at power meters, but I just I can't bring myself to spend that much money on something I don't really need and that really won't make me go faster. I realized my Garmin woo, woo, with Connect IQ apps, I did a little research and I found out something called F3B ePower. F3B ePower. So this is a uh, user-made Connect IQ data field that you can in install onto your Garmin, compatible with just about everything, even like this VivoActive watch. And with this data field, it will estimate your power based on, you know, how the device is moving through space. It knows it's like current, you know, it's got an accelerometer in it, it knows it's moving. And so it can use that information to kind of estimate its moving space. Now, this isn't a new idea. In fact, I nearly bought something called an iBike Power Pro power meter back in the day. And the iBike was essentially the exact same thing, an accelerometer-based power computer that also had a small wind sensor that attached, you know, kind of to the front of your bike there. And it could tell, you know, like what wind conditions, so that could make a difference. But... Uh, they were considered to be pretty terrible. And in general, I think estimated power is pretty bad. Now, you know, Strava will estimate your power, even if you don't have any kind of power meter, and put that in there as estimated power, but it doesn't count the same as real power. Like, it doesn't factor into your training, and it's always just estimated power. It doesn't go on to, like, you know, it's there, but it's not really there. You can't really use it. So I thought it'd be really cool, so I tried it out. I downloaded it. You have to do a little configuration. And one of the first things it asks is it says weight of gear and bike uh, rider in kilograms. And I didn't read it very closely and I put in 120 kilograms because me, my mic and stuff all adds up to about 115, 120 kilograms. And so I went out riding today with a group at Bike Surgeon, and my power levels were like off the chart. And I thought, well, this thing's just terrible. This sucks. You know, my power, like just easy cruise down a flat street was like 200 watts. I'm like, ah, that's 100 watts, maybe over 100 watts too much. Well, I just discovered, going back and reading the configuration a little closer, what I did wrong. The actual value is just your bike and your gear it already knows your weight because you enter that into the computer so it uses that so i'm just changed it back and i'm getting ready to go try it out and we're going to see if we get some more reasonable power numbers i'm just going to go cruise around the neighborhood for a minute and see what the power numbers come out so i'll come back and i'll tell you how it goes in a minute <clears throat> 
Okay guys, so I've had a little bit of time to play around with the F3B power and let me give you my thoughts about it. So first off, I feel like it's really similar to having, when you have your power meter set up for 10 second delay and the power is kind of like, kind of, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's kind of a rough estimate, you know, 10 seconds, it's not real uh, immediate, you know, you don't start pedaling harder and see it suddenly go up. That's the feeling you get with this estimated power. This is free, so I mean, it, it would have to really be bad. If you don't have a power meter, it'd have to be really bad for me not to want to use it. And I feel like it's worth using for free, but I wouldn't really trust the numbers like for a lot of training situations. Uh, one thing I do like about it is that it seems fairly reasonably accurate based on my former you know numbers and checking and stuff. It doesn't know if I'm drafting, it doesn't know what the wind situation is, but climbing, it seemed to be fairly accurate, like a longer climb. I started uh, stomping up the climb, and a few seconds after pedaling hard, I looked down and it said 768 watts, which really surprised me because I knew that that's, that felt about right for what I'd been doing, but I'd only been doing that for like maybe three or four seconds so I didn't expect it that it would be that high yet so I think the estimates can really be all over the place and looking at the data you know you can see it's not nearly as spiky as real power numbers it's much more leveled off and kind of rounded and estimated so there's a reason why you know estimated power isn't included as a default option on Garmin's I mean it, it would cost them nothing to add it. I'm sure that the algorithm and, and it could be added. They just, they don't feel like it's, I mean, well, plus they probably want to sell power meters. I mean, if Garmin, <laughs> Garmin does make power meters, they want to sell those. But also, even before they made power meters, they could have added this and they just didn't. Uh, I just don't think it's actually a worthwhile metric for, for training. Uh, it's, it, but it is kind of cool. I mean, I got to admit, being able to look down and seeing power when you're pedaling hard. And when, when I was pedaling hard, I tended to see numbers that reflected what I think would be there on a reasonable real power meter. But you can't really say train with it because it was kind of bouncing around a lot. And I kind of personally don't even really care about training with power when I'm on the road. Uh, it's too, there's too many, in, you know, it's unless you're on this perfectly flat road or like a nice, very steady climb, which we don't really have long enough climbs for it to really matter around here. So I only really care about trainer uh, power when I'm on the trainer. So it's kind of neat. It's probably not really worth messing with unless you just really want to have a power metric to look at and you're too cheap like me to buy a power meter. So it's free. Try it out. See if you like it. Connect IQ, F3B power, ePower. Might, might work for you.